Nation as a member of the active roster. Appreciate that. Man. Good to be on. <laughs> Congrats on the upgrade from the scout team to the second team on Friday now to the first team I take it this week. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been different. It's it's been really fun to to go against the scout squad guys who I've been playing with for so long and uh, it's really fun to be back out there with with uh, the guys I've been playing with for a couple of years. What are your emotions like the night before you make your return and do it against Utah? You know, I mean just cra it's amazing how this is set up. I'm actually uh I'm pretty calm about it actually. Um uh, I'm just going to go out and control what I can control, you know, just go play hard and try to make things a little bit easier for the guys, but I'm really not feeling uh not feeling a ton of pressure or anything like that because I've seen what these guys are capable of and I've seen just how they've developed and and how good of a team we are with me off the floor. So hopefully I can just go in and, and make things a little bit easier for everyone. And that's the most exciting part for me is this team went six and three without you. I, I, I thought probably five and four range given how tough the schedule, they have been better. So now how do you uh, integrate with that group knowing, okay, this is a good team without me and I hope to make them better. Yeah, I just want to come in and do the little things, you know, just, just some of the little things that I bring that, um, that we haven't necessarily had. I just really want to be a, a force on the glass. Uh, I want to run in transition, set screens, get guys open, and just really try to make the right play. I think uh, if I come in and move the ball and try to make the right play, the right, the right thing's going to happen, and uh, the ball will come back to me. Guys will get shots where they need shots, and I think it will work out. Are you okay if we call the first nine games the Colby Lee era? Is that all right with you? That's fine by me. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's the Colby Lee era for the next few years. So. And, and he developed in a way that he would not have, which I think is good news for this team. What do you, what do you think of his development? Yeah, for sure. Uh, that, was, that was one of the, the coolest things I was able to see in these nine games was just the development of some of these guys. Uh, some of our guards having to, to relearn how they were going to play and learn how to score with me off the court. and. Uh, our spacing changed and our ball movement was great. And to see some of these guys like Zach and Dalton and Colby really flourish was awesome. Zach Selyus is the leading rebounder right now. And, and he joked that you're going to have some catching up to do. How do you feel about that? <laughs> oh, for sure. Zach's a, Zach's a monster. So we'll, we'll go see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, it's a monster with a mustache, no less. Yoli Childs with us on BYU Sports Nation. You talked about a few of the things that you observed in Colby Lee and some of your teammates. What else did you learn about this team while you were watching for the first nine games? I learned our, our ability to bow through adversity is incredible. Uh, it's such a tight-knit group of guys, and it's a group of guys that don't let the frustration of the game get to them. You know, whether it's a scoring drought or uh, whether things aren't going right, uh, nobody really seems to hang their head. It's, it's a group that really believes in what this coaching staff has taught us and a group that really believes in each other. And I just want to go in and contribute to that because it's really special what these guys are able to do together. You have a high standard. You've been a 20 and 10 guy, right? Um, do you feel pressure to be that guy right away? Or do you give yourself a little bit of time to ease into that, given that you're coming into this in game 10? Uh, absolutely not. I, I don't feel any pressure with that. Um, I mean, stats are stats. I, I care about the win. And hopefully with the amount of scoring and everything we have, I, I don't score 20 a night. I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But I'm not really too worried about that. Like I said before, I'm just going to try to make the right play. And uh, if the right play is for me to score, then I'll go score. If the right play is for me to, to find somebody, then I'll find somebody. How do you integrate into uh, the current setup of the offense, and how much is it adjusted with you in there? Uh, not too much adjustment, honestly. I think um, a lot of our, our pick and roll game is going to make it a little bit easier for the guards. I think just with the vertical spacing that I can bring, it'll be a lot harder for the opposing guards to, to come be that bottom man. So. Hopefully I can just get guys more open. Hopefully uh, TJ and Jake can get to the rim a little bit easier. And that's all I really want to do with this offense is make it easier for everybody. So if you played in the Virginia Tech game, it would have been 23. So is that what you're saying instead of at 17? Least, at least. <laughs> I don't know. The, a new they, BYU record. No, the, the guys are on fire that, that game. That, that was, was crazy, right? Yeah, that was so much fun. That was amazing. And I'm glad that you bring up the phrase vertical spacing because you can attack from <laughs> vertical uh, – well, I guess let's call it levitation, okay? <laughs> you know, you're the lob guy for BYU basketball, and Colby's done a lot of good things, but he, he's not the guy that you throw up a, a ball three feet above the rim and tell him to go get it. So you, you bring a new dynamic that way. Yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, Colby's done a lot of great things for us, and uh, he's improved a ton as a passer, so is Dalton. Uh, so hopefully I can go in and do those things that they've been able to do, um, but kind of just bring my own, uh, my own game to that too. Mark Pope, before the game on Saturday, told me, um, getting ready for the broadcast, that 
the, the game against Virginia Tech, specifically, I said, what went well there to get 17 threes, right? He said, the game told us how to play, and we listened. Do you feel like each game is different in that way, or are there commonalities in, in what you need to do to win? Um, there's commonalities for sure in terms of just moving the ball. Uh, when we're side to side, we're really good. Uh, when we're sticky with the ball, as coach likes to say, we're not as good. So those are the commonalities. But depending on how teams are guarding us, there's uh, just little tweaks that we have to make in each game. So that's something we've talked about a lot as a team and that me and him have talked about a lot personally. And uh, it just goes into making the right play. You know, you don't overthink it. Understand that you understand the game. And if you see somebody open, give them the ball. If you have a good shot, shoot the ball. It's pretty simple. And if all five guys do that, it's, it's a good recipe. Mark said as well, and it was really interesting, he said, I, I haven't really gotten mad at these guys for things they haven't done uh, or, or have done. It's more for things they haven't done, which is, hey, you didn't take that open shot. Yeah. Which, which is kind of fun when your coach gets mad at you about that versus something else, right? Yeah. Uh, I've always said Coach Pope is unbelievable in his balance. He does a really good job of holding guys accountable, getting us to focus on the defensive end, getting us to worry about playing hard. But then if you if – you, uh, pass up an open shot, you're sitting next to him. So it gives you a lot of confidence in, in the ability to own your shot. He doesn't worry so much about makes and misses. It's about did you take the shot and own it. Yoli Childs on BYU Sports Nation getting ready for his debut against Utah tomorrow night in Salt Lake City. What do you know about the Utes in your film review and studies you get ready for another emotional rivalry game? Yeah, they're a very good team. Um, I think they're very talented and they're a young team. And I think some of the losses they've had just can be attributed to being young. And uh, I don't know, when you're young, it's kind of hard to, to figure out how to bring it every day and how to bring it every game. And they're for sure going to bring it tomorrow. So I think we're going to see a, a very good team, a skilled team, a long team. And um, they're really good. So hopefully uh, we can get a good game from them and we can go out and, and focus on ourselves and do what we need to do. How do you feel about this week as a whole? Because it's not just Utah, it's UNLV as well in Salt Lake. Uh, an opportunity to add two more to the resume. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. You know, uh, I'm honestly trying not to focus too much about even the game tomorrow. I'm really focused on having a great practice today, getting the work done I need today, having a good night's sleep, and then I'll worry about tomorrow. And, and after that, I'll worry about UNLV. How are you different as a player now compared to last year in terms of what have you added to your game and, and just how is your approach different? Um, I think one of the biggest things is my motor. We focused on that a lot, running the floor, pushing on the break. Uh, I can't give away too much to Utah. You know they haven't seen me yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's but true. It's not play last year. <laughs> <laughs> they felt you play last year. They watched you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really not going to give up the game plan then? That's I, can't give, I can't give up the game plan. <laughs> don't, don't do it, man. Nor don't do we, it. Nor do we want you to. Um, what was it like during this nine games to watch, and what, what did you learn? Because I imagine it would have been hard, like, against Houston, okay, BYU has the ball with a few seconds left. I want to be in there. But you have, you have to watch, and luckily that was a fun watch, right, with TJ Hutt. Awesome watch, awesome watch. TJ's been phenomenal, and uh, I've, learned, I've learned a lot of things that you can't really see when you're on the court. Um, you can break it down in film and stuff like that, but when you're in the heat of the moment and uh, you can watch the offense and you can watch plays made on defense, I think from a different perspective you can see what needs to be done. And uh, you can see how much better we are when we're moving the ball around. You can see – how much better we are when we're locked in and in gaps and in a stance on the defensive end. So I've been able to really see the game from a unique perspective that I haven't been able to see from in a couple of years. So uh, I think it's been really good. Yoli Childs with us. And before you go, I need to ask you about your interactions with Bill Walton and uh, Jay oh, Bills yeah. in Hawaii. How, how were those conversations <laughs> and those interactions with those two notable basketball personalities? Awesome. Awesome. They're, they're two phenomenal human beings, you know. Uh, Bill Walton is a legend. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about him a lot, but he's one of the greats to ever do it. And uh, Jay Billis, unbelievable human being. Both of them are, are great guys, and uh, they both kind of get it. So it was super cool to get to talk to them. 94 feet with Jay Billis, right? A lot of on fun. The, on the yeah. sand. 94 feet, man. Yeah. Not, not a bad place to do it. Yeah, can't have a beard, Jay. Sorry. <laughs> hey, let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for uh, tomorrow's game against Utah and to have a good practice today. I appreciate it. Yeah, you do play Utah tomorrow. Just a reminder. <laughs> appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Coming up, which one of us nailed the regular?